It's like I'm bloody loading a Windows XP computer. What is up guys, welcome back to the Rev Report. Today we'll be looking at the all new 2024 BMW X1 M35i. We'll be looking at its interior, exterior, special features, exhaust note and driving dynamics. Stay tuned. So starting off with the exterior, this is the new X1 M35i. This one comes with the optional frozen pure grey metallic colour. As you can see it looks, stands out in this colour. It also comes additional with these little bits like the M Sport package. So it's got the 20 inch wheels all round. Um, they're the same size all four corners. You've got these functional vents here which flow through the wheels and also this vent. It's so huge for the radiator. As you can see it's like pretty much the radiator is showing fully. There's no mesh covering it. Um, which BMW is known for to not really cover their radiators very well. Um, you've also got this nice lip, front lip here in gloss black and this grille, it's not really big like the new M3, M4 or the 7 series but it is the Baby X model so it does look like a Baby X7 with this design, the grille. Um, but overall you've got a really nice sporty look and just looking at it at an overall front angle, it does look like the new X3M so it does look quite similar to the rest of the M Performance, M Lite and the real M products that BMW are making in terms of SUVs. Um, coming through the side, you've also got these M inspired mirrors. So you've got these little um, fins sticking out of the side mirror, as you can see. Um, you've got the 360 camera, so you've got camera here, camera at the front as well. You've also got full LED adaptive headlights and full LED taillights as you'll see later. You've got the side side blind spot assist on the mirrors. Um, you've got these Y-spoke 20 inch alloy wheels. They do come with cast, not forged. And you've got this gloss black side skirt here as well. You've got the newly designed door handles that aren't the pull to open. Then instead you pull your hands underneath, pull it like that. And pretty much blacked out trim all around the car so the side mirrors the trim around the windows and also the roof rack holders as well this is the side view at the rear and this is the rear as well so in this car you do have let's see so you've got real exhaust pipes on both ends which is pretty surprising for 2024. But then again, BMW aren't very offensive with their exhaust tips. So it's a blessing to have real exhaust pipes. And as you can see, you've got a really nice diffuser as well. You've got the whole pretty much lower end of the rear bumper is gloss black. This is the design of the rear tail lights. So pretty much full LED for all the lights. And you've got this nice pattern here on the side of them as well. And You've got the little BMW logo or text there to remind people in the tiniest area that you've got a BMW. How thoughtful of them. And you've also got the rear view camera here. Reversing camera washer as well. So you do activate this through the iDrive 9 system. But yeah, this pretty much is the look of the all new X1 M35i. I think I much prefer it much much prefer it over the Audi SQ2 and I have to say it's pretty competitive amongst its competitors it's pretty much at the top when it comes to design as you can see it symbolizes the M, M models in the SUV range of BMW so yeah the color okay in Australia at least is an extra $5,000 for this car so you be the judge as to how much you want to spend on an, on a new small performance SUV but yeah it's pretty pretty hefty price tag to have this color you've got how the doors sound as well so I'll just show you so 
So pretty much the sound of the doors when they close, they have a really nice thunk to them. Um, probably not as good as the sedans, but it is quite up there. So coming into the engine of this car, what actually powers the M35i? So it's completely internal combustion powered. It's a complete engine. There's no hybrid system. It's not electric. It's completely engine powered. So this comes with the legendary B48 that the late BMWs are known for having this superior reliability and it's no doubt it is. So this comes with 233 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque going to all four wheels via a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. So pretty much because the X1, X2, they are based on mini platforms, they're based on a front wheel drive platform. So this would come with the same seven speed that you'd see in other mini and front wheel drive BMW products. Now, let's head on to how it sounds. Pretty good. It's got a quite muted sound, but We'll probably get a better sound when we take it for a test drive. It's got a soft limit on, so yeah. Now moving in to the interior. So jumping into the interior, you've got the all new um, interior that the new X1 is known for. In this car, you do have the middle stripe to, to show where, like if you're going on a straight angle at the track, like that precise movement that you need. You've also got the Harman Kardon sound system. You've got these M Performance seats that are so comfortable when you sit in them and they're so plush. They also support you quite nicely. Probably not as good as like an actual M car, but in design wise, at least they do look good. And also to mention, this has full faux leather. So it's a vegan leather. Um, it is 24, 2024, so we must get forward with the times um, and these are the door cards inside so as you can see you've got this hollow type of aluminium door handle inside you've got the lock and unlock buttons now on the side so I remember in BMWs of old they do come in the middle but now we have literally just two buttons in the middle of the of the interior at the front center console it's just the defrogger for the rear and the front Pretty much the AC controls are in the screen as well. And you've got pretty much the standard radio controls and the drive controls all in the middle here at the bottom of the center console. Um, you've got this shaver style gear shifter, the hazards, and you've got this button which opens up this tiny, tiny um, center console area as well. So pretty much, it's a standard brand new BMW in design in the inside. You've got the electric controls for the seats at the front. So jumping in. So the outside is really well insulated. You've also got these nice paddles as well, which are very similar to, or they look similar to the new M3 paddles, the G series M3. Um, you've got one air vent two air vents here and this is a glove box compartment which you can store whatever you want in there but yeah pretty much when you're sitting in here the seats do support you probably not as much as the actual m cars as i said earlier but they are quite comfortable they're really nice for daily driving this is pretty much the new iDrive 9 system we have here as the infotainment so at the moment it is quite buggy and that's what i was showing you earlier so when going through the like for example the menus just take ages to load um and just sometimes i was pressing the mute and it wasn't muting it instantly so it does take some time you've got this infotainment gauge cluster as well this one also monitors your monitors the driver how they're going this little rectangle i don't know if you can see it but yeah so it also monitors your driving so you can Pretty much you have a tiny, so they've reduced the screen size for 
to compensate for the steering wheel rim. So the screen for the gauge cluster only comes up to here. It doesn't go all the way. This is all hollow or just black piece around the screen. It's just a huge bezel. And you've got the shortcuts for the iDrive on the side here. So they pretty much control um, at a go. You can go media, telephone and navigation. You can also adjust the look of this um, gauge cluster you can see in front of you. So you've got this button here, you just press this button and you can change the content you can see and then layout and the heads up display at the end. So you've got plenty, plenty of customization. So as you can see, I've changed it to this simplified speed only layout. You can change to the power, how much power you're utilizing from the throttle and the speed and also your proper rev counter and the speed as well. Then content in the middle, you can see the cruise control, navigation, etc. your media. With your heads up display, you've got three options. So you can probably see it flashing. So you've got standard, you've got the cruise control and you've got the sports view as well. So as I told you earlier, it does have the Harman Kardon sound system as standard. So we'll just play the rev report music. such like immense clarity it's like the sound is right like the sound stage is right in front of you it's natural so it's definitely one of the better Harman Kardon sound systems probably better than the previous M2 I've showed to you guys earlier um, yeah no complaints at all so you've got definitely a good sound stage in this car pretty much the interior in this you feel like you're sitting at a really good position and you don't you have heaps of headroom so like it's not it's not at all lacking in the headroom and you feel quite spacious in here you've got these nice sporty m style seat belts another part of the styling i wanted to mention with the steering wheel it's not complete it's not really a flat bottom but just looking to the side of it you've got this nice um this nice like sort of geometrical design 3d like at the bottom of it the spoke seat, the spoke at the bottom and just the whole steering wheel just looks really nice and sporty so yeah with the seats you've also got the adjustable thigh support here and also the builds quality right so pretty much what I've noticed is you've got scratchy hard plastic from the bottom half of the interior but upwards you've got this nice aluminium materials with the leather vinyl um, soft touch materials pretty much goes throughout the rest of the interior. It's literally dead center like half Top half is nice leather and aluminium combination bottom half is all plastic So heading into the rear Seats of the X1 M35i as you can see you're also complemented with these nice red leather seats and black as well red and black pretty much the same style of door cards at the rear as well you've got the Harman Kardon styling speakers tweeters as well as the main speaker underneath those tweeters and you've got the door handles as well um, so jumping in once again you've got this really nice and airy spacious feeling interior at the back you've got these reading lights which can turn on increase and turn off from the touch button next to them um, you've also got this huge panoramic sunroof at the top of you, which opens that half, but this half would stay. Um, pretty much the the back seat, it feels really nice. It does go forward and back. The reclining is quite nice. You do have a decent recline. It's not too upright like the iX2, and you've got a nice support for your thigh as well. You've got plenty, plenty of foot space plenty of deep foot space and plenty of seating space at the front it just feels very airy and I think that's got to do with how high the car is um, it's not as wide as other SUVs as you'd expect from most BMW X SUV models um, but you do feel like so airy and so spacious back here so jumping into the middle as well see it's not as comfortable and you do feel that narrowness of the car but 
it still feels pretty airy because of that roof, because of that high ceiling, because of the panoramic sunroof that brings in the light and just feels like you have infinite headroom. Um, you also have at the rear, so two air vents and the two USB-C ports as well. So yeah, you've got plenty of room. Also on the door cards, you've got decent space for cup holders to carry large bottles at every single door. You've got huge pockets for each door. So yeah. And also between the left and right rear seats, you've got this little hole to poke the driver and the front passengers next to tickle them. But I don't recommend you do it for the driver because obviously you don't want to flip the car because of you. So yeah, moving on. Heading to the boot space of the X1 M35i, you've got an electric tailgate, which is great. You've also got some space here with the first aid kit and you've got space here as well for any other items. So in the boot, I'll put in the leaders in the video in the video now. Um, so yeah, this is currently, um, you've got the under the floor, under floor storage. So when you've closed it, this is how much space you have. So it's pretty decent for an SUV, a small SUV. But yeah, you just go like this and you pull it up and that's how it stays upright for the under floor storage. That's your tire repair kit as well. So that's pretty handy because this car doesn't come with their own flat tires. So the rear seats also fold. So it's actually a ribbon for each, each seat. So I've done it just for the middle. And you pull it, you keep pulling it so that it um, drops fully. Or when you put it up, it stays there. You have to pull it again so that you put it back to its original position. And same goes for this one. So it just goes all the way down. Oh. So yeah, that's pretty much the interior of the new X1. Now we'll move on to the driving dynamics. Driving the X1 M35i. So far, it's pretty flat around mild corners at mild speeds as well. Obviously, we're in a residential area, so we cannot we cannot be too silly around here. But going around corners in your cheeky, speedy, speedy fashion, it is really nice. And you've got this really occasional pop when you change gears and an occasional pop when you let go of the throttle as you can probably hear got that really nice turbo whistle when you do let go of the throttle. Handling wise, really tight and pretty flat for an SUV. I just heard a pop through the speakers. <laughs> I can, you can hear the slight turbo whine as well inside. So you've got plenty of drama that goes on in the sporty character of this car. So for daily use, it's pretty good. For the track, we have to see how it goes, obviously. But I reckon it's pretty capable. Maybe some modifications here and there, but... So this is everything in its sportiest setting. So putting it back to efficient. 
everything's just toned down, much more relaxed. The throttle is much more, much heavier, and the engine sounds much quieter, almost like a diesel rattle at the lower RPMs as well. So it becomes your very typical BMW luxury car. For a pre-production system, this does function pretty well, apart from those slight hangs that you get in the beginning, but once you get past them, no problems at all. You've also got the heads-up display as well, which warns me how much fuel I'm saving or using in the heads-up display. Looks like the large compass icon as well. So at the moment, it's got a little bit over half a tank of fuel left, and it's reading 410 kilometers of range. So roughly, let's say around 750 to 800 for a full tank of fuel, which is pretty decent. The brake pedal has heaps of travel. So if you're used to a very sensitive brake pedal, you definitely need to get used to this. This also has the auto hold function as well, and you've pretty much got all the standard safety equipment you get in most cars these days. So you have the auto brake collision warning and collision um, active, active braking as well. You've got your adaptive cruise, your blind spot assist, and your lane keep assist as well. So as you can see, it's got the active steering as well, and the active cruise. But it is asking me to put my hands on the steering wheel. Damn, these brakes are quite noisy as well. Moving off in this dual clutch gearbox equipped X1, it is really smooth for a dual clutch. No problems there whatsoever. I'm not actually steering the car, the car is steering itself, but I do need to have my hands on the wheel. This does have launch control. We're gonna go now. This car is rated 0 to 100 in 5.4 seconds, so it's pretty quick for an SUV. And knowing BMW, it's probably quicker than that with their underrated power figures and time figures. So, yeah, it does have launch control, but as you saw, it was a really, really, really huge delay. So, let's try this one more time just to test the delay. So, absolutely no delay letting go of the brake so that delay was definitely probably because of how how far I or how long I kept it in launch control active mode it does have a sense of comfort when it takes off it's not as it's not as rowdy as an M car thank you all for watching please like comment subscribe and I'll hope to catch you all in the next video cheers